unlike many of the crypto projects out there, Ethereum isn't really an end-to-end -end product. It's, it has always been a platform by developers for developers. And as such, our kind of our primary task is to make developers happy so that in their turn they can make their end users happy. Now, uh, for, to achieve this, uh, one of, in my opinion, one of our most important roles is to either aid the existing tooling, developer tooling out in the community, or maybe fund or create new ones that the ecosystem is currently lacking. And my talk will be about one such tool that we wrote, but before we dive in, let's see what the actual pain points are. Usually, uh, when the developers start approach Ethereum for the first time, they start playing around with Remix, this browser Solidity Playground. They get the hang of Solidity. They start prototyping their contract. Now, unfortunately, quite fast, they realize that developing in a web browser is cumbersome. So they switch to more sophisticated tools, such as Truffle, which can do automated, repeatable testing, and um, also aided by uh, uh, proof of authority chains or instant transactions. Now, after developers actually finish writing their code, usually the procedure is that they deploy it on a testnet, either Robson or on an alternative, because that's really nice. It's a real-world environment, many users, etc. Now, the problem is that this perfect testing environment often goes belly up. And the reason is, uh, one of the reasons is that the test networks are, can be really heavy, uh, either due to spam attacks or to large projects such as Raiden doing intensive tests. Uh, these can be unstable from time to time, usually because somebody figures it would be fun to reorganize the chain. And lastly, it can often be um, unfriendly because you have this awesome project you want to deploy, but you don't have test ether, and that's annoying. And the truth is that if you are a small project, then running testing on the testnet is fine, but if you're a bit larger project, such as Raiden, or maybe have many projects, such as Consensus, or perhaps uh, uh, you want to run a hackathon, then the live test network isn't really ideal. So the ideal solution is actually to run your own network. Now this might seem like a good idea at the beginning, since it's light, stable, you have unlimited funds you can share with everybody, but when you actually start configuring your private network, uh, horror strikes in. So it's actually quite a nightmare to configure, because it has gazillions of different moving components. And so, uh, we've been working for quite a long on a tool called Puppet, and the goal, our primary goal with Puppet was actually to run the Rinkabit testnet on it, but we kind of realized that it will be an amazing tool for, at least we hope an amazing tool for other projects too, so we kind of polished it up and uh, gave it out to the community. And for the rest of my talk, I'm going to do something really crazy. I would like to demonstrate what it takes to actually create an entire Ethereum network with bells and whistles live on stage. <laughs> so, uh, first up, if you want to actually start your Ethereum network, obviously you need to configure the Genesis block, the shared initial accounts, the balances, and you have to define what pre-compiled contracts you have, what fees they have. Now there are different fork rules that you need to take care of, and if this wasn't horrible enough, uh, if you have to do this for the five primary clients, that's about 414 configuration values. And that's just a snippet from Parity's really extensive list. So that's not really a pleasant experience. However, if we try Puppet, now Puppet is a command line tool, but kind of a command line wizard to help you. So the first thing, it just greets you with a nice message and asks, what network would you like to manage? We'll just type DEF CON, that's a nice network. And then asks, what would you like to do? Well, we don't have network yet, so we don't, cannot show network statistics, but we can configure the Genesis block. So let's just switch that. And what kind of consensus engine? Well, we have proof of authority for click, but since we want actually a cross-client network, let's stick to ETH. Nice, do we want to fund initial accounts? No. And uh, do we want explicit chain, uh, network chains? Well, if you run a public network, maybe it's worthwhile. No, for now we just do random. And that was about it. We actually managed to configure an entire Genesis state for five different clients without doing anything. Now, of course, uh, the, if you actually want to run your own network, then the genesis is just step one. You will need to get some nodes online. But uh, the, one of the biggest problems that we see with people getting nodes online is that they have absolutely no idea what the nodes are doing. So you really need to monitor the nodes somehow. And we really want to do that via an eat stats, or running eat stats, which isn't really easy to do. But let's see how Puppet can help. So what would you like to do? Puppet asks us. Well, we'd like to deploy a new network component. It gives us a choice. Let's stick to eat, uh, eat stats. 
And which server? Well, ooh, let's connect to a server. We have a server called DEFCON Network. It's a registered domain name. Work. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Connect to a new server, DEFCON Network. And yay, Wi Fi works. Awesome. So we managed to connect. Uh, uh, yeah, that's why you don't do live demos. DEFCON Network. Do we trust this? Yes, we trust the remote host. Cool. Now, what, uh, where do we want to deploy ETH? Since we want to deploy possibly multiple websites here, let's uh, deploy it on uh, port 80. And do we want to share the port 80 with others? Yes, sure. Now, we, when we actually say we want to share port, port 80, Puppet will deploy a reverse Nginx proxy, automatically configure everything without us having to do anything. And uh, what domain do we want to uh, host this um, eStats uh, page on? Stats.defcon network. Okay, and what's the ESAS password? Hello. Hello, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fine. Now, it, in theory, Puppet now runs in the background, starts up entire ESAS and everything. And now, not only will it start it up, it also lists us that, yes, we have a server connected, the IP address, and what services it's running. And now, if you load up a web browser and look at the actual domain name, then hopefully, yep, we have an ESTAS running. And you, ca you can see it is actually not an image, it's a live stats page. OK. Now we have a st we can monitor the thing, but we actually have to boot up the network. So let's deploy now a boot node. Yeah, that's sometimes the console is funky, but it will. Now again, we have a small st a scan so that we know what we are up to. And let's deploy a new network component. Yep, we want to deploy a boot node. And where do we want to deploy it? Well, usually you don't want your boot node to go down if somebody's dosing your website. So let's just switch uh, to a new server. Let's call it boot.defcon network. And uh, yes, we connect to the new server. That's fine. We can manage multiple servers at the same time. Where do we want to store the data directory? Let's call it defcon boot node on the server. What UDP port one? We'll just you'll go with the default uh, configurations. They aren't even that uh, interesting. And what do we want to call the boot node on the stats page? Let's call it boot node. That seems about as dumb as it can get. <laughs> and uh, again, Puppet does its funky magic in the background. And if we, I think we can, I can even close this. Yep. And if we now stack, uh, check our stats page, then, yep, there, well, fair enough, we have our boot node registered. Maybe it's not a bit tiny, but we have a boot node running, and it's immediately linked to the stats page. We don't even have to configure everything. Cool. Now, we have a static chain that doesn't do anything. Obviously, we need to mine on the chain to make it progress. So we can, again, ask uh, Startup Puppet, ask it to connect to uh, our new little uh, network, and let's see how what it takes to deploy our mining node. Now we want to deploy a new network component. Let's deploy a mining node or a sealer. Again, miner kind of uh, takes a kick out of the network uh, machine, so let's do, put it on the miner.defcon uh, network machine. Yep. And uh, yeah, 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 where do, should we store the data? Defcon miner. And where should we store ET hashtags? Defcon ET hash. And the remainder can be, the connectivity strings can be simple, and we want to register it on the uh, ETH hash page, uh, sorry, ESTAS page as the miner. Now what ether base should, uh, ooh, that was fancy. What uh, ad address should the miner use? We'll just copy paste this here. And what uh, gas price and gas targets, we'll just stick to the defaults, it's not that important. And again, Puppet is pushing out the mining node to our remote server. And it should finish booting any moment. It does a quick health check. It actually checks whether the ports are reachable. We have a nice uh, dump of everything we configured until now. And if we look at the stats page, fingers crossed. Yep, we actually have already four blocks mined. <laughs> and not only that, I'm really hoping that the boot node will connect soon to the mining node. But uh, since time is limited, we'll just check it in the next uh, slide. Yep, they've connected. Cool. So, of course, uh, now you actually have an entire network up and running, but if you tell your friends that, hey, I have this awesome network, they will just go, okay, and how do we use it? 
and then you kind of start scratching your head. So it would be really nice if, uh, well, first thing first, you could see what the network is doing. So for that, obviously, we need kind of a block explorer, which uh, currently, for example, there is no uh, open source block explorer that supports uh, uh, Go Ethereum as a backend. But however, there is one that supports parity. Now, can we actually deploy a parity node so easily? Well, sure, let's try. We want to deploy a new network component. Let's do an explorer. Where do we want to deploy it? Well, we will put everything, all our websites on the same machine. So let's use DEFCON network as the machine. Yes, we want to port, share port 80. And let's do explorer DEFCON dot network. Where should the data be stored? DEFCON explorer. And the defaults, it's, yeah. Let's call it on explorer on the stats page. And again, it's pushing it out fairly fast, hopefully. I'm just waiting for the node to finish booting. Yeah, I'll just close it. And let's see, does it actually work? Fingers crossed. Yep, we have our block explorer up and running, and we have already 11 blocks mined. And we can check that our miner already has uh, uh, 42 ether. Ooh, that's a nice number. And of course, if we check the network stats, then again, we already have three machines running without actually configuring too much. Okay, now we have, we know what the chain is doing from the inside and from the outside. Can we ask our friends to use it? Well, sure, but it's kind of hard to use it for a simple client, so let's try to give them a web wallet. Now, of course, everybody knows the most uh, sophisticated web wallet currently out there is my Ether wallet, so let's just deploy my Ether wallet to our little custom test network. So let's just, uh, deploy a new network component. We want to deploy a wallet to our web se website server. Yes, we want to share port 80 and call it uh, wallet.defcon network. Where should we store the data? The wallet and just uh, spice up the defaults a bit. And let's call our wallet on the stats page that since that runs also backend node, let's just call it wallet. And again, Puppet is just uh, configuring everything in the background for us, and it is pushing out the data. And if we check our wallet now, this is something that takes usually the most time to boot up. Yeah, boom, we have our wallet. And you can, as you can see, it is actually configured for the DEF CON network. It deployed a backend node to connect to. We have the front end, and everything seems to work nicely. Cool. So that one kind of was easy enough to deploy all the components, but if you share this with your friend, then he'll say that, okay, I want Ether, and you will be the one who has to give them Ether all the time, which gets boring really fast. So we really need a faucet that you can just start up and it just runs there and everybody can request Ether. And to do that, we have uh, actually, uh, Go Ethereum has a faucet built in or support for it based on the light client. So let's ask Puppet to deploy that. Yep, we want to deploy a new network component. And let's do faucet. That's our sixth on the list. And we want to deploy it again onto our web server. We deployed everything there. Faucet, defcon, network, domain name. Oh, yeah, sorry. Port 80 first, and then faucet, defcon, net. Oop, thank you. Ooh, nice. Okay, how many ether do we want the faucet to release? Well, one ether is fine for 15 minutes. Uh, we want three tiers. If you wait more, you get more ether. Do we want recapture protection against bots? Mm, no, it's a test network here for DEF CON. We don't care about robots. Where should we store the data? DEF CON faucet sounds about right. And uh, let's just pick a different port for this one. What should the faucet be called on the stats page? Oh. Set. Of course, if I run a faucet, I do need a private key so that the faucet can actually fund its stuff out of. So we have a private key pasted in here. We have to unlock it for the faucet. Boom, it's unlocked. And do we allow unauthorized requests? Well, since it's a DEF CON and we don't care about the lifetime of the, uh, this whole network so much, yes, we authorize anyone to request funds. And Let's deploy it. I'm really, ooh, it managed to deploy. That was nice. And now comes the moment of truth. Can we actually, as you can, again, we have a nice dump of all the configurations. 
Now, can we actually load up the faucet? Yep. Oh, why is it? Yep, we have a DEF CON authenticated faucet. And if we request funds now, uh, into an ether address, give me one ether. Yep, the faucet accepted our funding request and if the miner manages to mine us a few blocks, yep, we just mined it and we have our account funded. And we can also check the stats page that everything that we deployed until now have indeed appeared on the stats page. Now finally, uh, you deployed everything but uh, you don't even know what your genesis block is, you don't know how to connect to it and it's just a mess of different websites on different domains. So you really want to deploy everything on a single host or at least on a single place that your users could find it. And the only way to do that is to have a nice dashboard. And that is the, actually the last thing that uh, Puppet can do currently. And let's just try to do that. We're just having a nice, yep, deploy a new network component. And the final piece of the puzzle is a dashboard. Let's deploy it to our website and let's use the root domain, defcon.network for it. And then it will ask which services do I want to list? Yep, I want to list the stats page. I want to list the block explorer. I want to list the web wallet. And I want to list the faucet. And do we want the eStats secret to be public? Yes, let's make it public. And Puppet again crunches everything, makes the configuration files, deploys a web server for us, and if everything worked correctly, I should be able to load up a nice dashboard. Yep, and we have the first page, we have the uh, eat stats. On, on the left hand side, we have a nice uh, sidebar menu where we can switch between the eat stats. We have the block explorer that we just configured. We have our uh, web wallet that we can play around with. We have the faucet to request all the funds that we, ooh, people are requesting funds, amazing. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and beside, uh, beside uh, all of these services that we configured, we also have detailed guide on how to connect Go Ethereum in archive node, full node, light client, or embedded for embedded machines. We have details on how to connect uh, Mist and uh, Ethereum wallet. We have details on how to connect Android and iOS devices. And finally, if you really don't prefer Go Ethereum as your client of choice, then we also have details on how to connect C++ Ethereum, Ethereum Harmony, Parity, and PyEth app. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Puppet Network Manager. Thank you very much. <laughs>